Beans, an apologia for not loving to cook for Tanya. For me, memory turns on the cloying smell of boiling beans in a house of women waiting, waiting for wars, affairs, periods of grieving, the rains, el mal tiempo to end. The phrase used both for inclement weather and to abbreviate the aftermath of personal tragedies and they waited for beans to boil. My grandmother would put a pot on the slow fire at dawn, and all day long the stones she had dropped in hard and dry as a betrayed woman's eyes slowly softened, scenting the house with the essence of waiting. Beans, I grew to hate them. Red kidney beans whose name echoes of blood and that are shaped like inner organs. I hated them in their jaw-breaking rawness, and I hated them as they yielded to the fire. The women waited in turns by the stove, wrapped by the alchemy of unmaking. The mothers turned hard at the stove, resisting our calls with the ultimate threat of burned beans. The vigil made them statues, rivulets of sweat coursing down their faces, pooling at their collarbones. They turned hard away from our demands for attention and love, their eyes and hands making sure beans would not burn and rice would not stick, unaware of our longing for our mother spirits to return back to the soft sack that once held us, safely tucked among their inner organs, smelling the beans they cooked for others through their pores. The beans took half a child's lifetime to cook, and when they were ready to bring to table in soup bowls, the women called the men first in high voices, like whistles pitched above our range, food offered like sacred steaming sacrifice to los hombres. El hambre entered the room with them. Hunger, as a spectral presence, called forth from whatever other realm the women visited when they cooked, their bodies remaining on earth to watch the beans while they flew away from us for hours. As others fed, I watched the dog at the screen door, legs trembling, who whimpered and waited for the scrap I hated the growling of pleasure when at last it got its gory bone. I resisted the lessons of the kitchen then, fearing the Faustian exchanges of adults, the shape-shifting nature of women by the fire. Now it is my daughter who keeps a voluntary vigil by the stove. She loves the idea of cooking as chemistry and the Tao of making food. Her waiting for the beans to boil is a meditation on the transformative properties of matter, a gift of memory food from my island. And I come out of my poem to partake, to share her delight in the art of feeding, like a recently freed captive of a long-ago war, capable at last of a peaceful surrender to my old nemesis. El hambre.